It will be something that will live with me for a long time. You can't get over how upsetting it is. For me, Africa is home. I was brought up there. My parents met and married there. I went to school there. And I always wanted to go back there to work. I ended up getting the posting of my dreams, and I'd been there for about four or five years. Well, we've been trying to do a story about trophy hunting for quite a long time but we'd never managed to actually persuade anyone to let us go along, because there was a lot of public outrage about the killing of big beasts of the jungle. We wanted to get under the skin of someone who'd paid to do it. My producer, Nick, basically just didn't give up. Hunting is a vast industry in Africa, but a really, really difficult story to do. It's not so difficult to find organizations, governments, who are willing to show you their efforts to uh, stop poachers. Are you happy with us folk filming everything? Absolutely. Can we do it right from now? Yes. It's and a very different thing to find people who are willing to show you their efforts to shoot an animal. I just can't have a delays in the, in the, no, in no, the no. hunting experience. No. After you know two years of pursuing this, Nick managed to persuade a professional hunter and his American client to let us go along. Can you explain what the whole point of being here is for your client in particular this is a, a communal conservancy so in a communal conservancy the community benefits out of any tourism or hunting that takes place there's only one problem when we turned up the professional hunter was fine the client his american customer was fine the american customer's wife was not Ooh, cozy the reason why we were allowed on the shoot was that we weren't allowed to identify the hunter himself. I knew this as a cameraman before, so my whole filming was around being sensitive to these requirements. I'm going to go straight to the Chobe River this afternoon. I'm dying to see what it looks like. Yeah. At first we thought it was a bit of a disaster. Then we realised that the professional hunter was a character all of his own. These soft drinks, wine, beer, everything else. Brilliant. Go when you stay out of the beer until sunset. <laughs> We're just getting ready with everything. We're taking a whole load of equipment. Um, Darwin's taking everything quite small and mobile, but also we're going to have a drone, I think, Nick. A drone here. Bring a drone um, so yep. we can get, so we can uh, get an off. idea of the landscape, yeah. And uh, we've got a load of section of GoPros and, of course, ever important. Um, what are these again? <laughs> Binoculars. <I think laughs> Binoculars, just in case we don't see them up close. But anyway, so we've been told to be there now, so we'd better get a move on. Lots of elephants walking up and down here. All looks like cows and calves. They're no big old bulls like what we're looking for. The professional hunter was almost better than the client because the client wasn't really a hunter. He was paying to dress up in khaki uniform and carry a gun. That was his idea of a holiday. Probably when we were having breakfast this morning, they were having breakfast too. But the professional hunter, this is what he did day in, day out. And he was a really engaging character. We are hunting the trophy elephant ball my hunting morals only let me hunt old animals, an animal that's going to die of old age anyway. He was passionate about what he saw as conservation and passionate about animals, and yet he killed them. I get the sense from you, you really love animals mm -hmm. and nature. How do you square that with shooting and the killing? Um, it's, a, it's a use, it's a value. If they didn't have value, they wouldn't be here. And if we don't maintain their value, they wouldn't be here. These, these all tribal areas in order for these people to tolerate these animals and the losses that they have in crops and trees and fruits and so on, there has to be a value. Most hunters that you meet will certainly say that they are pro-conservation. I think the professional hunter that we were with clearly wanted to maintain the environment and to help the environment. 
He had persuaded himself and the Namibian government was also well behind this idea that the way to conserve these big animals was to set aside a certain number of licenses where you controlled how many of the animals were killed. Did you see the destruction? You got money from it because people pay big money, hundreds of thousands of dollars to go and shoot these animals, and you used that money to help protect the other animals. First time I've been on a hunt, never done anything like that before, and it involved trekking for hours and hours and hours. And I think the appeal of being out in the bush is understandable, because it's this wild jungle. You can walk for hours and hours and hours, as we did, and not see anyone else. They did very specific things, like following the spore, the footprints in the mud. The spore wouldn't be old enough yet, and wouldn't have even started breeding it, so it's not even an option. Smelling dung and seeing how warm it was or how fresh it was. Baby elephant. Why do you think it's baby? Small poop, small baby. <laughs> big poop, big, big elephant. Hearing, listening. You hear that? It's an elephant breaking a tree. It was a cameraman's dream location. But ironically, elephants as big as they are, we couldn't find any. You think it would be easy. You know, these huge big elephants, they've got to be easy to spot. No. When we eventually did locate these elephants, which took us forever, we were amazed at how silently they uh, walked through the, through the forest. We were right close to them and you couldn't hear them. These huge animals. It was really, really difficult to isolate an elephant that the professional hunter was willing to shoot. These are all cows and calves and young bulls, nothing here. So it's not what we're looking for? No. To get up close with them is quite exciting and exhilarating, but it's quite terrifying as well because they are incredibly dangerous animals. And with one swat, they can kill you outright. <laughs> But at the same time, you feel quite queasy about why you're there, because you know that ultimately one of these amazing uh, animals is going to get killed. This is a sign of a big, mature bull. And do you think it's on its own? No, there's a whole herd here. There's probably at least 30 elephants. <laughs> Progress, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to track a lot of elephant to find a big old one. And there's a really good track here, so the signs are very positive. Of course, even when we hone in on them, the hunters will take a decision about whether this is one to be shot and killed certain requirements. One of the main ones is it's got to be old. Everything became quite serious. There was a lot of tension in the air. Wait. 
when that no, shot no, no, no. went off, it was the most horrific moment. You had this noise of the gunfire, and then the elephant screamed. Come on, go in. We were all hoping that it had been killed, but unfortunately, it had only been wounded. It was just incredible how it just disappeared into the forest. Yeah. Um, it's, we, uh, I always prefer a quick ending. Um, but with all the bulls around us like that, it was very, very difficult to get in closer and also then get a, a brain shot, which is what we prefer because that's instantaneous. At one moment, we're thinking, oh my word, what if we don't find this, this wounded elephant? And as it turned out, it took us four hours to track the elephant again. The idea this time is to finish it. Shoot him. Shoot him. It was really shocking, actually. I was quite surprised, because obviously we'd had a big build-up. We knew what was coming, and we sort of knew what the end result was going to be, and it was still really shocking. Shoot him right between the ears. Yeah. Kneel down. Get closer. You can't get over how upsetting it is when you see this huge, big, wild animal just collapsing. Nothing ever prepares you for that moment of death. It doesn't matter how hardened you are to these kind of things. Witnessing it at first hand right there it will be something that will live with me for a long time. the professional hunter and the customer were also both shocked. It's always emotional when you take an elephant. It really is. Tell me why. <sighs> we kill them because we love them. We want them to survive. My young daughter must see them. She must see them in the wild, not in a zoo. And we have to. We have to. His sadness was also genuine. It was a story that was full of contradictions because you had a hunter who said he loved animals but then was also killing them. We've hunted our whole lives and we have hunted all kinds of animals. And yes, we kill them, yes, but we eat them too. This is an enormous amount of protein. It's going to feed 2,000 people to, to, today and tomorrow. And it's protein that they wouldn't normally have. Also revenue they wouldn't normally have. We're taking one old bull out of the population so that those elephants we saw yesterday can occupy this area. Part of the conservation thing was they stripped the animal and distributed the meat to everyone in the community. That was also very shocking, seeing them hack at the animal with machetes. We watched it all. It went from this big animal to like a butcher's carcass. It's hard not to be uh, moved by that. It seems pretty horrendous. And I still can't understand, even having spent a lot of time with professional hunters who are passionate about conservation, I still don't myself see why someone would want to shoot an animal, let alone pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for the privilege. But I also understand their perspective when it comes to conservation, and so I find that a difficult argument to, uh, to get my head around still. Both the customer and the professional hunter were sort of easy people to criticise, I think. Lots of people would be absolutely appalled watching someone basically fire at point-blank range between an animal's eyes. It's not really a fair contest. 
the professional hunter. He knew that he was going to get a lot of criticism. And to be fair with him, he had a message, and his was that Namibia's elephant population was going up because of the way they handled killing a certain number whilst conserving the rest for the good of the, the rest. Like, it's a controversial tactic, but as far as the Namibian authorities are concerned, it's working.